Welcome to the third video tour of uh, our Heritage Day event. Um, so I, I'll introduce you to um, Ruth Weinberg, who has written uh, articles and uh, papers on the Crossley engines. Um, I will hand over to her to tell us something about them. Thank you. Well, welcome to the jewels in Abingdon's crown of the beautiful building that we ha we're in the basement of. Um, our pair of Crossley gas engines. I'm going to tell you the story of how they got here and then show you quite how they work. So the reason they are here is because at the end of the 19th century, Abingdon was really having problems with the water supply and the, um, there wasn't enough water to get to the north of the town. The town was expanding up the Oxford and Radley roads and there were also summer droughts, um, which meant that the springs didn't rise, so there wasn't enough water. And in 1902, the council decided that something must be done and decided to take water from the artesian well in the square. And if you go to the War Memorial now and look on the right-hand side, you'll find that there are two metal plates set in the ground in the pavement and the well is actually still there underneath. The water was piped from that well along under the high street and it came in with this pipe over here into the basement. Don't forget we're at ground, underground level. It was taken from that water inlet over there to the pump over here and the pump pumped the water through this pipe over here to the top of the building uh, to give it a head of pressure. It fell through a U-pipe down into the mains to give a supplemental supply of both water and pressure. And it worked extremely well. The, it didn't work continually, but there was some sort of arrangement whereby a bell would ring if the water pressure fell and somebody would come and start the whole pumping. And to power the pump, the council bought a smaller three and a half horsepower Crossley engine to keep it running. Well, they relied on it so heavily, they decided in 1906 to buy two bigger engines so they could keep pumping in case one engine needed repair or maintenance. And here they are, our beautiful five horsepower Crossley gas powered four stroke engines. And, um, you can see they'd sit side by side and there's this lovely picture here of what they looked like when they were newly installed in 1907. The two men standing uh, by the side of it are from the McIntyre family, the gang who ran the uh, Abingdon and kept it working for three generations. So the engines were powered by gas. The gas came in through the regulators and meters, which are over here, still in their original position. And the gas was channeled under the floor to each engine. And you turned on the water valve, and this is the water valve here, still in its original position. And the engines would be started by lighting a flame in this arrangement, which was the, the gas, it's something like a Bunsen burner. You lit the flame and the heat was passed into the gas chamber by a ceramic tube. And when the tube got hot enough, the gas would explode, you'd have the compression stroke and the piston would start and the engine would be off. It was as simple as that and apparently it only took a few minutes to do. And the energy from the piston was transferred from the drive pulley here over here uh, via leather belt right up to the lay shaft up here, over here. And you can see that the, there was a belt for each engine and a pair of drive or run idle wheels for each, for each one pair for each engine. So one of the wheels would be static and the other one, the run wheel, would help to turn the lay shaft and to move the belting or to the belting to move the engine working from one to the other there was a string that ran along the back wall you simply pulled the string that horseshoe the stirrup arrangement moved across 
and the other engine would take over. It was as easy as that. And then the energy would take, would be into the lay shaft here. It would turn this pulley here and the, the belting, it was a two-step arrangement, so you could alter the speed. Um, and the, this belting, leather belts they are, ran to the water pump and then it would do the, it would drive this shaft over here to raise the pistons up and down in the barrels to raise the water. Beautiful, simple system. This was so successful uh, that um, it would ran on and off through two world wars. Uh, the council relied really heavily on this, but in 1947, the uh, pump in the Artesian well in the square was electrified and these fell out of use. Um, and they were left here, and you can see what they looked like, the contrast between new and old. This became a bit of a dumping ground, unfortunately, and they were sitting here quite neglected. Um, in the 1970s, there was an effort to restore them so that the public could see them uh, going. There was lots of argy-bargy about what should we do with the engines? It was decided it was too expensive to get rid of them. Uh, some bright spark thought it might be a good idea to take them to the top of the building, put them in the attic so they could be on public display there. Well, they weigh three tons between them, never mind the pump and the rest of it. It would have fallen through the floors of this 17th century building that ended up basically back where it started. When the, uh, the town made, the, the gas was made in town, in Abingdon, down by Mr. Winterbourne's wharf where the boarded up hotel is at present. And when the engines were working, they got very hot, despite the water-cooled jackets. And um, this, as I said, we're in the basement. There is no ventilation here. And there are stories of the men who work down here being overcome by the heat and the fumes and being carried out of the building. The other thing that happened is that the gas, as I say, which was made locally in the town, wasn't always up to standard. And if it didn't ignite in the, in the engine, it would then exhaust into the street and then it would explode. And although I haven't found any records of people being injured, there were an awful lot of complaints because they got frights and in the middle of the night they got woken up. People were not happy about this. But until gas was standardised, this was a really local occurrence in every big town. Anyway, in 1970, they had a go at refurbishing it, but there were so many obstacles to bringing it back into use um, that this kind of fizzled out. And they sat here until 19, 2012. And in 2012, the whole county hall was refurbished and the whole arrangement was taken away, stripped down, it was repainted, put back together very lovingly, and brought back to the present arrangement. The reason the uh, engines have been transposed is because there was less room than before. The back wall has been brought forward a little bit, so this has been shortened, but the pump is in the original place, um, and the original arrangement, except for the transposition of the engines, is as it was before. And we're really lucky to still have them. As far as I can tell, there is no other arrangement like this. In other words, with an, un, um, an engine that hasn't been converted to running either by spark plug ignition or electric ignition, um, as this one is. It's in its original state. Please do come along and have a look at them. We're going to show you the whole arrangement working now. There is much, much more to the story uh, than there has been. Be I mean, there is so much. The story of Abingdon's search for water makes a really, really fascinating thing to read about. So please do go to abingdon.gov.uk Look on the top ribbon for history and then find the feature articles and you can find out all about the story. There's so much more to discover. 
enjoy. And thank you so much for listening.